all over the world. Species clash in nature's savage battle of survival. On the rolling savanna, the heights of the Andes, and the rivers of Australia, all are locked in deadly conflict. Animals fight tooth and claw to win food, territory, and rights to the bloodline. From the jungles of Africa, to the Canadian outback, there are no rules. This is Animal Fight Night. Some animals don't share their space. They avoid a mutually assured destruction. In the seas off northern Australia, one such predator prowls. It's not a great white shark or a killer whale. It's the largest reptile on the planet. Covered in tough scales, the armor-suited saltwater crocodile fears nothing. The hyper-carnivorous killer has the strongest bite in the animal kingdom. Escaping from the clutches of his three-inch teeth would be the equivalent of bench-pressing a pickup truck. He's the most aggressive of all the crocodiles. In the ocean, keeping to himself is easier. Specialized salt glands in the tongue excrete excess salt without dehydrating the croc, so he can spend weeks in the open reaches. But when he comes inshore to breed, competition brings out his killer instincts. On Australia's East Alligator River, one huge croc guards his favorite spot, like an armored knight at his castle gates. It's the perfect perch for attracting a female's roving eye. A cruising croc thinks he's king of the castle and wants the plot for himself, which means getting medieval on the occupier. The king goes low, but the resident knight goes high. Lifting his head means gravity gives his downward strike more force. Matching bites apply intense pressure around the neck. Rows of raised scales cover the length of the king's back. They're his heavy armor. Inside, plates of hard bone, called osteoderms, help prevent penetration, even from the most powerful bite in nature. But saltwater crocs have no bony reinforcements on the underside of their neck and limbs. And protruding legs are an easy target for a well-placed bite. The king snaps. He's locked in stalemate. The knight changes tactics and takes the battle below water. A sudden jerk threatens amputation. It's too much for the king croc. And he flees. Seen off by the knight of the East Alligator River. Not all animals seek solitude. Some prefer to team up and create an army. But when two tribes go to war, 
Keeping together can be the key to survival. Despite their slender frame, African wild dogs are some of the deadliest predators on the continent. In packs of up to 40 strong, they target prey twice their size and kill four out of five. They run down their victims and eat them alive. But get separated from the pack and you risk being left behind. Fights between related packs are rare. But if strangers arrive and threaten the local food supply, it can spark a turf war. These intruders know they're in hostile territory. A three-dog vanguard keeps tight formation. One breaks ranks and heads straight into an ambush. The home pack charges in at up to 44 miles per hour. The tactic, scatter the intruders and pick them off one by one. An isolated intruder makes a break for it. runs into an unexpected water hazard. Five sets of jaws pin him down like prey. Three dogs target the head. Pound for pound, an African wild dog's bite is stronger than any other canine on the plains. But even upside down, he can snap back until a local disarms him with a lunge to the neck. Well-developed temporalis and masseter muscles apply nearly twice the pressure of a human bite. The move prevents the straggler bending his neck to deliver a bite. 42 teeth wrap around his throat. One-inch canines threaten his jugular. The dog is in the grip of death. But the hound on head duty loses focus and lets go. The intruder's jaws are back in play. But once again, the terrain slows him down, and the mob moves in for the kill. With the intruder dealt with, the pack seeks other targets. This dog has had his day, and the local scavengers won't have long to wait. Being the biggest puts you at the top, but staying at the top can be your undoing. It's high summer in Yellowstone. Breeding season for America's largest land animal, the bison. This standout hunk of beef is a bull in his prime. Right now, his testosterone levels are doubling. The sex hormone is a natural steroid that keeps him sexually charged and at peak performance. A power-packed one-ton titan. It takes a beast of a heart 
to keep beefy pumped up. The average bison heart is nearly eight times the size of an adult human's and can move an incredible amount of blood around the body. And it's not just any blood. The bison's testicles are in overdrive, creating huge quantities of testosterone, which increases muscle mass and aggression. When he fights, the release of adrenaline from the adrenal gland sends more oxygen to those pumped up muscles. And it's this hormone cocktail that gives the bison the boost he needs to fight off his rivals. It makes him the ultimate fight night heavyweight contender. The females are ready to mate. And Beefy wants the ladies to himself. But a gathering of rival suitors presents a clear and present danger. His growl is a warning. All through the season, big-hearted Beefy takes down his love rivals. Each victory prolongs his time at the top, but the physical cost is brutal. After weeks of heart-pounding action, one last love rival is defiantly seductive. It's a red rag to the angry bull. A male bison will stop at nothing to maintain its dominant position. A downhill charge makes the most of his weight advantage. His massive 75-pound head smashes into his opponent like being hit by a family car. The love rival braces and pushes back. Brute force won't cut it. Beefy brings out the heavy artillery, the horns. Beefy uppercuts. It rips through fur, but not flesh. Head to head, they're evenly matched. So Beefy needs a new tactic. A broadside lifts the Lothario off his feet and out of contention. But a season's victories catch up with him. Battered and bruised, he'll be no match for the next contender. And he retires from the fight game. Even so, he has ensured his legacy. His work is done. Hunger is a powerful drive, but it can lead to a predator taking on prey out of its league. This is wolf country. But the wooded shoreline of Canada's Lake Achigan is also home to a North American giant, the moose. Armed with broad 40-pound antlers, a bull moose is a hard target, even for a wolf pack. But a smaller moose cow could be a very tasty dish. A pack works together on large prey, tearing at flesh on the rear and flanks. The result, worn out, wounded, wolf chow. A moose cow feeds in the lake to build up reserves for winter. Moose are the only member of the deer family that regularly feed on aquatic vegetation. They can even dive, remaining submerged for over a minute. A few yards offshore, 
The lake also offers safety from any passing pack. Her massive six-inch hooves make excellent paddles. She can swim at six miles per hour. At around six times the weight and almost three times the height of a wolf, she doesn't fear a solo attack. A lone hunter disagrees. This solo wolf has left his birth pack to find a partner and start his own bloodline. He's not the type to look a gift moose in the mouth. But this maverick moose is as cool as ice. She stands her ground to protect her rear and flanks, then attacks with huge pointed hooves. A clean shot could kill. But she overshoots. The wily wolf cuts inside. A snap to the sinews makes her spin and leaves her body open. His teeth sink into the triceps at the top of the forelimb. The muscle is vital for walking and swimming. A severe wound would make her lame, unable to escape. Backward pointing canines lock in place bringing 410 pounds per square inch of jaw pressure into play, tearing through the muscle. Her attacker hangs on. And shears through the tough muscle. But the Maverick has a trick up her sleeve. She finds deeper water and sinks to her knees to submerge her opponent. If the wolf gets trapped beneath her, he'll drown. a moose on the loose once again. This ambitious go-getter was ultimately out of his depth. You become the head honcho for a reason. Finding out why can be deadly. Some animals command respect. This adult male tiger is in his prime, and he knows it. His stats say it all. His bite generates up to 520 pounds of pressure. He's armed with long, razor-sharp, retractable claws. And a swipe so powerful, it can smash a skull. He'll defend his territory against all intruders. And this one is believed to have killed other males that he's discovered on his turf. 550 pounds of claw and muscle. But every generation brings a kid with attitude. The youngster makes himself at home on the big guy's turf. When he hears the dominant male, it's too late to run. Local rangers suspect that this 200-pound heavier male killed two of the younger tiger's siblings. Now, he faces the same fate. Tigers are solitary creatures, 
finding another male on their territory will not be tolerated. With no chance of escape, there's only one option left for the smaller tiger. Total capitulation. The larger cat circles to intimidate and assert dominance. The crouching posture is submissive. For the dominant male, it's not enough. The younger male tries to push off the angry killer. Big mistake. On his back, the odds are stacked against him. The big guy brings his key weapon into play. His deadly 520 pound bite. Outgunned and out of position, there's no chance of escape. In any fight between two killing machines, there's a risk of a costly injury, even in victory. And you don't stay at the top by taking dangerous risks. He's demonstrated his dominance and neutralized the young male. For now, among male zebra, the right to breed has to be won. Adolescent males fight among themselves to establish status, unaware they're being watched by a seasoned pro. On the African plain, a new generation of zebra emerges. They can normally walk 15 minutes after birth, run within an hour, and they need to, as the savanna is filled with dangers. By the age of four, the feisty male survivors face a new challenge, breeding. But first, they need to prove themselves among their peers. They battle other bachelors for the right to challenge a stallion for his harem. They don't have horns or claws or a battering ram head, but four years of running from predators has given them hind legs so powerful their kick can kill. During the breeding season, the grasslands become a battleground for would-be champions. Bites and gouges are standard. Anything goes. Even below the belt is up for grabs. A hard bite to the lower leg tendons could cripple. This challenger specializes in hair pulling. A mouthful of mane sees off his competitor. In fight after fight, would-be contenders leave it all on the plane. But when a dominant stallion decides on a preemptive strike, it suddenly gets a lot more dangerous. He has a harem to protect and wants to assert his dominance over any would-be challenger. And with everything to lose, he won't hold back. He goes airborne to coil and fire. With twice the impact of a heavyweight boxer's punch, it stuns his opponent into defeat. He follows up with a final sneak attack to see off the young bachelor. Point proven, he'll return to his harem, 
safe in the knowledge that he's still the top stallion. The easier a kill, the less energy predators need to waste. But get the strike wrong, and wasting energy will be the least of their worries. It's a hard life being a warthog. To survive, they need to grow up fast. An abandoned burrow gives this mother a refuge for her young family. Piglets start out defenseless. But as they grow, their tusks develop, making them a much harder meal ticket. These tuskers can turn on predators and charge at 34 miles per hour. Warthogs aren't worried about not being beautiful. Their problem is they're delicious. Leopards find them lip-smacking. These big cats are skilled ambush predators. They kill with a bite to the neck. But in challenging conditions, their kill rate can be as little as one in 20. They'll often target small game, or even scavenge, anything to survive. This hungry young male needs to eat every three days. A baby hog would be ideal. He sees their burrow, adopts pounce position, and waits. When the dust settles, it's not a defenseless piglet, it's an older, angrier, and heavily armed tusker. She could kill this cat. The confused big cat fluffs the kill shot. The young hog was in his reach. But at the last second, an older hog dashes out from behind and blocks the path of the hunter. Instead of a piglet, his teeth find a determined tusker. He's bitten on more than he can chew. His 1.3 inch canines can't contain her. He clamps down with his paw. But this hog won't go quietly. The porky powder keg hauls her attacker in a bid for freedom. The leopard counters with a head throw. But it brings her tusks into play. A gash to the throat could kill. He needs to get this hog on her back. He gambles. Shifts his jaw hold. and piggybacks his prey. He's now open to an upward tusk thrust, but he uses his 100 pound body weight to flip her over, belly up. It's the killer move. The leopard hoped for an easy meal, but ended up with the fight of his life. <laughs> yeah. 
Even predators need to watch their backs, because catching and keeping are two different things. 130 feet above the water, an osprey scans for prey. Spots movement. He hits the water at 44 miles an hour. Armed with perfect feet for fishing. Two digits facing forwards, one backwards, and one that can change orientation. His talons snap shut in two hundredths of a second, roughly 12 times faster than a human blink. An impressive catch, which hasn't gone unnoticed. A great black-backed gull, the largest of all gulls, watches from the shore. An opportunistic predator and scavenger, there's little it won't eat. Its main weapon is its curved bill, which it uses to stab, smash, and tear. And it's not above a little piracy. The gull lines up an interception course and attacks. At the last second, the bird of prey takes evasive action. Gull's persistency is more than a match for the Osprey's maneuverability. And the Gull knows it. Gulls are excellent fishers. And ruthless pirates. The Osprey's faster than the gull, but weighed down by his fishy cargo, he can't escape. The pirate changes tactics. It goes high to dive bomb its target. The Osprey tires. The gull moves in for the kill. The bird of prey tries to shake him. But the pirate is ready for him. And grabs his wing. Outgunned and exhausted, he drops his catch. And to the victor go the spoils. South America, the Andes, the Cunhas live at a high altitude, but when they fight, they sink to the lowest depths. This dominant male Vicuña never lets his harem of females stray far. He has three jobs, keep his family safe, well-fed, and father as many offspring as he can. But this is bandit country, full of rivals. This young upstart is ready to steal himself a family, but only if he can get past the current head of the family who has a nasty trick up his sleeve. 
He strikes low and fast to cripple an opponent where it counts most, the family jewels. Saving his clan and seeing off a rival. The frustrated bachelors hang out in large herds. They hone their combat skills, getting ready to challenge for a family. It's the Vicuña equivalent of boot camp. Training is continuous and compulsory. These two males are evenly matched. They both weigh around 110 pounds. Their tactic of choice, headbutting and biting. Always looking for an opportunity to get at the soft underbelly or genitals. Suddenly, one of the Vicunias changes tactics and pile drives his opponent. It's a risky move that leaves him open. His opponent seizes the chance with a canine crunch. Back on the ground, he exposes his principal assets. Lose them, and no Lady Vicuña will give him a second look. He's lost, but he's learned, and can still be a contender. On the African savanna, titanic life and death dramas play out in plain view. But hidden in the continent's rainforests, the conflict takes a more sinister turn. There are 10,000 millipede species in the world. But the biggest of them all is the giant African millipede, who comes armed with a secret chemical weapon. He's the articulated juggernaut of the forest floor. He reaches up to 12 inches long. Upwards of 60 pairs of legs slip his slinky frame through the undergrowth to dine on rotting vegetation. He's flexible, but tough. Calcified layers of chitin form a hard, protective exoskeleton. It's the same chemical that creates lobster shells. Heavily segmented, he can curl tight to create a shield against attack. But he's also got a secret deterrent he can use in an emergency. Each segment of the millipede has hidden repugnatorial glands. When provoked, these secrete his own personal chemical weapon, a foul-smelling noxious liquid that can repel predators. This dark shell giant is mostly nocturnal. Foraging in daylight makes him easy to spot. And he's caught the compound eye of a hopeful assassin bug. He, too, is equipped for chemical warfare. Giant African millipedes are the largest of their kind. But for the assassin bug, size isn't the problem. It's the giant's armor. The millipede tries evasive maneuvers. His shiny shell helps him slip free, but the bug is relentless. He seems immune to the millipede's chemical defense and hunts for a weak spot on the millipede's underbelly. His curved clawed tarsus is sharp enough to grip onto the smooth round surface, while a specially adapted proboscis 
searches for an entry point in the region of the millipede's legs. He then injects his own chemical weapons, paralyzing toxins and digestive enzymes that begin to dissolve the millipede's innards. The millipede curls tight. But it's too late. The process is irreversible. This millipede assassin bug lives up to his name and turns his adversary into one long liquid lunch. Males can fight tough, but when females go to war, the killer claws come out. Dinosaurs still walk among us, or at least cassowaries make it easy to believe. These flightless forest birds are the second heaviest and third largest on the planet. They sport a bony keratin-covered ridge, up to seven inches high, called a cask, much like crested dinosaurs. Even their key weapon seems prehistoric. Each foot has a killer claw on the inner toe, which can grow over four inches. Like a dagger, an accurate strike can kill a human. We don't know who ruled the roost among the dinosaurs, but with cassowaries, it's the females. Females can be twice as large as the male and fiercely independent. It's the male who builds the nest, incubates the eggs, and raises the chicks, while the female finds other males for mating and dominating. This boneheaded bruiser keeps a beady eye out for rivals. If these angry birds cross paths, it's fireworks. In a park in northern Australia, a sassy cassowary emerges and mounts a charge. It's an epic fail. Compared to the forest floor, a smooth tarmac path is like ice beneath her clawed feet. Her rival sees her chance. But the incomer extends her dagger claw and stabs at her opponent's breast. Two of the cassowary's toes have a keratin tip sitting at the top, but it's the third digit that is the key weapon. It has a unique killer claw made of bone that is sheathed completely in keratin, making it extremely strong. Incredibly sharp, a well-placed hit will penetrate the skin and dig deep into the flesh, potentially hitting vital organs. But even a miss can be deadly. The downward stabbing motion of the leg can rip huge gashes in any adversary. The home bird retreats. Another slash by the invader brings her down. But she stumbles at the last second before she can push home her advantage, giving the home bird the chance to flee. But if they meet again, she'll be a much more wary cassowary.